Well, Jack, thanks so much for sitting down with me today. Thanks. Uh, The upcoming season at Vertigo Theater sounds thrilling. I mean, filled with ghosts, adventure, and intrigue. What inspired the theme, Turning the Page? I think, you know, the... We're all experiencing that right now. You know, we've come out of this really intense experience of the pandemic and, you know, which is still somewhat leaving echoes of itself around. But effectively speaking, we've gotten through what we hope is the worst part of it and believe is the worst part of it. And during that time, we all really found out who we were Mm. and who the people around us were, depending on what they believed. You know, we had lots of people who believed things we didn't believe that we'd known for a long time. And I think we all had to look back inside and figure out who we were and So for now, it feels like this past season was about metamorphosis, this kind of coming out of this world. And what are we now? And I think turning the page is what are we going to do now in the future to be? Who are we going to be moving forward? How do we look at the past and then move forward into the future? And I think that everything with this season for next season has been built around that idea, you know, that people are in situations and they have to sort of reflect on their past. Women in Black is very much about that. You know, a guy who's looking back at the past of an experience he had and how's that going to make him who he is today? And so all of the stories kind of line up in that way and it helps me kind of build a bit of a thematic system to the season. So, you know, I like to say there's something for everyone, but more for most, but that there's also a a story in the season itself. And the story, you know, the plays don't necessarily interact in that manner, but you will come in and there is sort of a a natural ethos system to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it's the 48th season? That's right. Oh my goodness, congratulations. Thank you. I mean, that's just so, so exciting in itself. And this this season promises excitement, newness. What challenges and rewards come with introducing audiences to these fresh productions? And how do you ensure each single premiere resonates with theater goers? Wow, great question. Um, Well, I mean, listen, the, the thing that's so exciting about Vertigo and what you know, we hope to constantly bring to the Calgary community is that you get to see the best work from all over the world without having to fly to New York or London or Toronto or whatever. And that is my aim, too, is to make sure that whatever is really exciting happening now is around, you know. Uh, And so premieres are an excellent opportunity. And our audiences are the best audiences I've ever seen in my life. They're so loyal and they're so open. And I think as long as you give them exactly the kind of world they're looking for, you can play within that structure. And so, you know, I think of it almost like a floating scaffolding. There is a protective bar around you, but it moves, right? And so to have four out of five shows being premieres in some manner, a really exciting world premiere, Canadian premieres, but also shows that have a familiarity to audiences. You know, I mean, The Da Vinci Code is a really exciting opportunity. The challenge is being that it's a huge story. It's a well-known story. And also how do you put on stage this massive book that has people flying all over Europe and, you know, we're at the Louvre and then we're in here and we're there and in Italy. And so all these places, you have to start to utilize the technology of theater, uh, projection design and just the magic of theater to be able to change time and space the way we want. And so those challenges are very exciting to us. Big 10 person cast show kind of that is also a big show for us. And we love taking those risks once in a while as well. As the artistic director, you play a pivotal role in shaping the vision and the direction of Vertigo Theatre. How do you approach curating each season's lineup of productions and what factors do you consider when selecting your plays? There are so many people that are involved, you know, whether it be our sponsors, our donors, our public funders, our loyal subscribers, our new patrons, right? And so you're always trying to find a way to do a nice balance. I think of it a lot like going to dinner. You know, you want to have an appetizer, you want a main course, you want a dessert, you know, and you try to balance it nicely so that everybody has something they're interested in and then other things they can take on. Um, And also, you know, where are you going to start to have conversation more with your audience about Mm. what theater is doing, you Mm. know, and thinking about what's in the universe today. So as I said, with Turning the Page, it's very much the themes come from what I perceive as the zeitgeist and in the nature of people. And so when you come, you always feel connected to it. You always want the idea of something that's going to be something the audiences chase. I think Mm. that's what people want to do at Vertigo. And so for me, as we've expanded out of simply just mystery, you know, I really love the idea of opening it up more to horror, thriller, suspense, courtroom drama, crime drama, sci-fi, like all these things fit into that idea of intrigue. And um, so putting together a season is really about finding the right mix. And then, of course, there are financial realities, too. How how can we make sure that 
certain shows can balance the others so that Mm -hmm. we don't put all our eggs in one basket. We have enough room to spread it evenly. And so, yeah, if I have like a Da Vinci Code with 10 actors, then I'll have a Cucina and a Deadly Murder that has two and three actors, Mm -hmm. right? And so we still are able to financially make it make sense. But more importantly, it's really about what's going to engage this audience and excite people um, not just locally, but regionally, nationally, maybe internationally. Mm-hmm. So we start to get writers and artists from all over the world, which we're starting to get, writing us and saying, hey, we hear that you're doing this. And so how how can I, as an artistic director, really be the best cheerleader for the organization and at the same time provide for the local community? And then the final piece, too, is now that I'm starting to get to know the local artists, ah, I can pick plays and go, this director would be great, this actor would be great, which I couldn't do when I first got here. Mm-hmm. But now, even as we're starting to cast and put our teams together, I, I'm thinking, already oh this director and so next season all the directors are local calgarian directors wow. um, this year 98.5 percent of our artists were from calgary and we have a really strong community here you know they talk about toronto being the new york and vancouver being the la but i feel like sh- this place could be like chicago you know mm. if, if we're going to just make that comparison where there's actually in some ways the most exciting work in the u.s is being done and as we kind of sit in between this place could really build to that as well I love that you say that because yeah, that's exactly what we saw with, with Heist, right? Where it was a lot of Calgarian actors, I think primarily mostly all yeah, Calgarian yeah, 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 actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just somebody from Edmonton and um, and then the other person w- lives in Vancouver now but is originally from Calgary. from Calgary. It's just it's so exciting to see you pull from our local artists here. And I think that's so important within our, our arts community, our theatre community, everything to shop our stash basically is the, yeah, <laughs> is yeah. the only way to say it. Yeah, and, and I mean I ran a theatre out in BC for five years mm-hmm. and I constantly pull talent from Calgary. I would come out yeah. here three, four, five times a year and I'd see shows and just really excited. The show's Vertigo Theatre, Calgary, ATP. Even when I was living in Toronto for many years, you know, ATP was extremely well known, Uh, you know, One Yellow Rabbit. There were companies uh, in this city that had already broken the the national, international scene. And so there was always an excitement to work with artists from here. And it's a real pleasure. And to be able to provide for them shows that can challenge them because Mm -hmm. Vertigo, those kind of roles are really rich roles to play because, you know, if you're if you're hiding secrets, it means as an actor, you can play many layers, right? You get to play sort of what's the facade out front, Mm -hmm. but also knowing that the subtext is still existing inside. So I think actors love playing in Vertigo shows because they get to play two or three or four things, right? Mm -hmm. This is kind of almost asking like to pick a favorite child, but do you have a a production that is really, really exciting to you right now? Oh, wow. That's such a good question because we're also developing a lot Mm -hmm. of new shows. You know, this is something Vertigo started doing more recently where we're starting to find writers right and and trying to because you know we've been sitting in this kind of american and british system of the mousetrap and all these other plays and they're amazing the agatha christie's but we have some writers now that are starting to write for the genre and we want to support them and give them opportunities so you know killing la cucina is a good example of that right we're kind of inventing this new this new superhero uh, lucia dante right and it's kind of this new poirot marple thing that maybe will become a serial and series of plays um you know, I think like most people, uh, The Woman in Black and The Da Vinci Code are really exciting to top and tail mm-hmm. the season. Da Vinci Code is such a huge beast and one of the biggest books of the last 20 years. And so to be able to do that adaptation, I think I'm really curious to see how that pans out. But all of them have something in them that I think are a little bit... It's 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 like asking me who my favorite kid is, you yeah. know? <laughs> if I have three kids, then it's going to, you know, one is better in some things than the other, but I love them all equally. Well, Jack, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Thank you.